first story. OP tried to gain sympathy from Reddit, but it backfired when his girlfriend's BFF exposed OP, leading to the end of their relationship. My girlfriend 25F and I 26M have been together for four years. She's been best friends with her friend also 25F since middle school. Before I came into the picture, they were attached at the hip, and then the BFF got jealous of how often my girlfriend and I were together. For our entire relationship, she's been manipulative of my girlfriend and not at all understanding, especially when my girlfriend cancels plans with the BFF to hang out with me. She has also said repeatedly that I'm abusive and controlling, even though she exclusively dates guys who are Oz. It all came to a head tonight when we were all out together. The BFF was going on and on about her new job, and my girlfriend finally interrupted to talk about our vacation instead. The BFF got upset and asked if my girlfriend even knew where she worked because she was never around anymore. The BFF started crying in the middle of a bar about how her feelings get hurt when my girlfriend cancels on their plans or doesn't reply to texts. I had enough and asked why she was so obsessed with my girlfriend and our relationship and always needed to lie to get attention about me being controlling. Then her blowhard boyfriend got involved and threatened me with physical violence. Everyone split up after that, and the BFF texted my girlfriend to try to manipulate her some more by saying sorry. She started the fight, and saying she wanted some space for a while. My girlfriend started crying about how much it all upsets her, and after four years, I was just kind of tired of it, and told her that she needed to choose between me and the BFF. She got upset with me, and told me that she couldn't choose between us, and that it wasn't fair to ask her to even though the BFF is always starting drama. Is Ada here, or is the BFF just a psycho? Hours later, a friend of his girlfriend GFF finds the post. Why T a Jake? Until now, I've been a casual reader of this sub. But after reading this one, I had to make an account and reply because I'm fairly certain I'm part of this friend circle and witnessed this all go down last night. Everyone is right that you are the most unreliable narrator who left out so many details. Let me clear those up. First, we all asked about her new job and wanted to hear all the details. She's so excited about it because it's her dream job, which your GF knows. That girl worked her arse off to get it, so she gets to talk as much as she wants about it. You two don't like hearing about anything that isn't about yourselves specifically about you, Jake. Second, your girlfriend has never known how to balance a boyfriend with healthy friend relationships. I've known them both since college. She's insecure, immature, and self-centered. That's how you're able to control her. The only reason you two get invited anywhere anymore is because her BFF and her boyfriend insist it would be rude not to invite her. Because you're a package deal, we're stuck with you too. Third, you were never threatened with physical violence. You're a 6'4 dude who got in a crying girl's face to scream at her, and her boyfriend told you to back up and put himself in between the both of you. Fourth, she was only crying because you were calling her names. This isn't the first time you've called her name. You literally called her a psycho in your post. Fifth, you make your girlfriend cancel on this poor girl at least once a month. I've seen the text from your girlfriend canceling because you came up with some bullshit about how you don't get enough time with her. Sixth, she only calls you a controlling arsey hole because you are one. You convinced your girlfriend to stop talking to her for a period of time when she was very depressed and self-harming because you said her being self-harming was also manipulation. Seventh, if anyone is manipulative in that friendship, it's your GF. I've also seen the texts where she told her BFF not to text her while she's with you at your request. Not to expect a response from her ever because she doesn't deserve one. And not to get upset when she cancels because she isn't owed any time. The girl apologizes so much because your girlfriend has convinced her she's a bad person, needy, or clingy. Lastly, Jake, if this is you, and I really don't see how it couldn't be unless there are two uh guys who think they're related to Tony Stark and went off on their GF's BFFS in a bar last night. The entire friend group agrees. I'll be sending them all screenshots of this post. Boyfriend replies. Mind your own business, because you don't know half of what goes on. And they talk. GFF buddy, you made it the world's business lol. Now you're mad. A got caught, and B got pegged as the A. Uh. If you want to talk about it, text me, because I'm not about to fight with you here. BF. I don't get why you had to come on here and start drama. I was just venting because this always happens when we get together as a group. She goes nuts, he gets all big and tough, and you stick your nose where it doesn't belong, GFF. First, you're the one who posted to start drama. Second, good thing it's Sunday, because you need some quality time with Jesus. And a therapist. Third, you were never threatened. You picked a fight with a girl who's a foot shorter than you, and her boyfriend told you to stop. Period. End of story. Everyone, 
Stay tuned for Jake's next post. Ada for lying on Reddit and getting caught. GFF clarifies details. He was never threatened. He was in this girl's face, berating her, when her boyfriend stepped in between and told him to back off. That's it. They left right after that because she was upset, and nobody could have fun after that. Someone asked GFF for updates, and they responded. 1. I talked to her BFF after I saw this post, and she gave me permission to share anything needed to clear things up. She's really embarrassed that now there wasn't just a public argument. It was published to thousands of people on the internet, even if her name wasn't attached to it. She's a genuinely kind person who had a rough period in her life two, three years ago. Thankfully, she's in a better place emotionally now than she was back then. OP wasn't wrong about how often she apologizes, but she's not doing it to manipulate anyone. She actually thinks that she's to blame for these types of situations when they occur, because the OP and his girlfriend tell her that she's to blame. From what I understand, she's firm in her decision to take some time away from OP's girlfriend. She thinks that's the best thing for her mental health right now, so obviously everyone will support her. As for the girlfriend, she does deserve better than OP. He's a very controlling and jealous guy. She's not assertive at all and has a lot of her own problems, which makes it easy for him to assert this level of control over her. I don't think she's a bad person at all, but she has always gotten her self-worth through having a boyfriend, and that shows in her actions. A lot of our friends are just done with having that level of toxicity in the friend group. But her BFF and her BFF's boyfriend always advocate on the GF's behalf, so that she's not totally isolated and keeps being invited to everything. 1. You know I sent screenshots and a link to this mess. She isn't talking to any of us right now including Jake because of it. After it was reposted on Am I the Devil? GFF comments. The friend here. 100% real, unfortunately. He texted everyone who was there that night to figure out who it was before bringing it back to Reddit, instead of keeping it private like an adult would. He honestly thought he would find someone who agreed with him. GFF posts another update. Update. The BFF mentioned in this post is fine. I told her that everyone is on her side, which has made her feel a little better about it. She's in a really good place in her life right now, and is grateful for anyone who's reached out. The GF is now single. This post and the backlash from everyone including her mom, made her realize that he was such a shtty guy. I know some people were worried about domestic violence, but she's staying with people right now clearly. I'm not going to say who because Jake's probably still lurking. She knows that people are here if she wants to talk. I'm not sure where their friendship stands right now, but that's for them to work out while everyone else supports them. Jake OP has been blocked on all social media by basically everyone. Hopefully, he finds himself a good therapist. Thank you to everyone who has commented, messaged, or reached out. You're all amazing people for caring about two girls you don't even know. Keep standing up for those who need it. This isn't an uncommon situation, so don't be afraid to reach out if you need help, or you think someone needs help. Second story. OP's fiancé wants everyone to know that OP is not pure. She called off her wedding, and now he is furious. It's exactly what the title says. I've been with my fiancé for six years and engaged for the past eight months. I've been doing most of the wedding planning, but my fiancé, let's just call him Ryan, will give his input here and there. So about a month ago, Ryan out of nowhere, said he was talking to some of his co-workers and thought that I shouldn't wear a white dress. This was totally weird to me. Ryan is a very artistic guy, so I figured this was more about how the photos would turn out or something along those lines, but I'm set on wearing white. I told him this, and I could see that he was annoyed, but he let it go. Two weeks ago, I finally picked and paid for my dress, and this caused a huge argument. Ryan again came to me very annoyed. He asked to see the dress I picked, but I said no because I wanted it to be a surprise for our wedding day. He asked me to at least tell him what color it was, and when I said white, he threw a fit. I honestly do not see why this was a big deal. Almost everyone wears white on their wedding day. When I asked him what color he thought I'd be wearing, he told me I should wear red. Again, this was super weird to me. I asked him why I would wear red to our wedding, and he told me that brides only wear white when they are pure. For some background, Ryan and I started dating when I was 21, and he just turned 20. He was a virgin when we met, and I only had one other person, who was my ex-boyfriend for four years throughout high school. This caused a lot of problems. In the first year of our relationship, we almost did not continue dating because of how insecure he felt. After that first year, it was never a problem again until now, I guess. He went to his mom about all of this, thinking she would convince me, but she's on my side. So two nights ago Ryan, his mom, 
and I stood in our living room and argued about my actual life being shown in a dress. His mom stated that he is no longer a virgin either, so maybe he should wear red too, and he burst out crying. Ryan is still stating that me wearing white would be deceiving all of the guests, and that it is different for guys. This has honestly made me question, even marrying this man. I don't know if it's just because everything is so fresh, but I'm really disgusted by him. He's not even religious, so I know this is just about him still thinking about me losing my virginity at 18 before I even knew him. I just needed to rant to anyone about this psycho. Comments. Greycat17. Look, if he is this insecure after six years together, things are not going to improve. Is he going to mention your impurity in his wedding speech? Is he going to try to leverage this in your marriage to get what he wants? Is he going to demand paternity tests for your children? I would seriously consider what you are signing up for. Dude sounds messed up. A uh, F. Woothwaller. Oh, I hadn't considered how this would spiral into paternity tests. And then, if they had daughters. Inevitable Okra 3 and 229. Jesus threw the whole man in the bin. For six years, has he been planning on getting back at you for not being a virgin at your wedding? I'm petty at F and would just stop having SX with him. When he asks why, I would say that since he finds your actual history so disgusting, he is now part of the history, while you tell him to pack his SHT and go find a virgin at 26. Business Artichoke 53. Lol. Go find a virgin at 26. I love this. Update. 14 days later. I'm in my late 20s and just broke off an engagement. This is going to be my first date in many many years. We're going to a nice waterfront seafood restaurant in North Carolina. It's a beach, but it's also November, so I have no idea what would be appropriate. Comments. H.S.K. Arfus. A nice fitting red dress. Comments from OP. The only relationship I'm in currently is with my career, and I couldn't be happier with that. Surprisingly, he is engaged currently, and honestly, I wish him luck. Update. One year later. This is my update one year later on the whole situation. I will start by saying that I did not get married. Ryan made that decision quite easy for me. I remember reading a comment that said I had to already be done with the relationship for me to move on so fast. That statement was very true. As much as I want to be the bigger person and not slander Ryan, he deserves it. I won't get into all of our issues, but there are some big ones that I would like to address. The absolute dealbreaker for me had nothing to do with the red dress, but instead was all of his little lies that built up through our entire relationship. Ryan is very smart. I can't take that away from him. We actually met because, even though I am a year older than him, he graduated a year before me. We had mutual classes. For someone so smart, he always got caught in dumb lies. As far as I know, he never cheated on me. That was something that I know a lot of people assumed, but even now I don't believe it. There was never any big lie that caused massive drama, but rather a mountain of little white lies that always made me question why. He would lie to people about having allergies. He would lie about stopping for food before coming home. He would lie about losing weight. He is a healthy person with a very normal build. He would just lie about so many things that did not matter. My issue with this is that I had absolutely no trust in the man over literally nothing. I never held him back from doing things, and he never asked permission to do things. So him going out of his way to lie about meaningless things really made me start to resent him. I do not think he ever talked to his co-workers about the dress. I think that was another lie. After telling him, I did not want to be together anymore. I asked him about everything that happened surrounding the wedding. I got no real answers from him, and to this day, I have no real closure. My best assumption is that he got sucked into misogynist forums surrounding purity and made up a story to bring it up to me. Our breakup was pretty nasty since he talked about me a lot online. For the most part, I had support. No one ever reached out to me or threatened me, but it's still annoying to have my feed filled with rumors that I cheated and broke up our engagement over nothing. There was a lot of name calling as well. Apparently I'm run through, I'm fat, I let myself go, and I look miserable without him. Eventually, he stopped on his own, as I never acknowledged any of it. Even with the online harassment, he never really fought to save our engagement. I was actually hurt by how he seemed equally ready to part ways. We have no contact with each other at all, but I do know that last month he actually got engaged again. All I know about the girl is that she is 23, a hardcore Catholic, and actually looks very sweet. For her sake, I hope they work out. I do not still talk to Ryan's mom. Sorry to disappoint. She was very kind to me through everything, but for me to continue talking to her would be a bit weird. I still got a happy birthday text and a Merry Christmas. I did have a date two weeks after I called off my engagement. That didn't go anywhere, and it was never meant to. For me, 
The date was to just see if I felt any guilt for moving on of which I had none. I had a huge career shift two months ago, and am now living in Philadelphia, far away from all the drama. I'm happy with where I'm at, and he seems happy with his life. I don't think I'll ever have to interact with him again. I'm sorry for waiting so long to update. There was just never really a right moment. There are also probably many grammatical errors, but whatever. If anyone is interested, I do have pictures of the dress. Comments. Okay Detective 5T412. Ryan is emotionally ill. I'm sad for his new fiancé. I'm sorry this happened to you. You deserved better. Teal Paradise. Yeah. I guarantee someone like him is not happy. That need to dominate is rooted in deep insecurity. And finding a virgin partner can't fix his feelings of inadequacy. It's all internal. Third story. OP's fiancé may pass away. But his sister mother not a typo is already calling dibs on half his house. My fiancé was in a car accident about a week ago. He has a 50-50 chance of surviving, though things have started to look up. His sister is also his birth mother. She got pregnant at 13, and his grandparents adopted him. So legally, she is his sister. She has never had any involvement in his life. His adoptive parents died three years ago. My fiancé and I have two children together and own a house. We have been together since we were 13 and are getting married this October. Our house is nearly paid off and I cannot afford to pay half of the house equity to her by myself. I have no idea what to do, or if she even has a stake in the house. He is 23, and does not have a will. He also has a life insurance policy that she wants half of. I can't get a lawyer to talk to me without coming in for a $600 plus consult. I'm hoping someone can give me some kind of direction, so I can stop worrying about my children, and becoming homeless and focus on my fiancé. This is in Ohio. Thank you. Please pray or send good thoughts my fiancé's way. I will update his condition when I find out more. Informative comments in the original thread. Commenter. You are not married? Is he on the birth certificate of the children? Generally, children have precedence over parents for inheritance. The Ohio intestate rules are, if a decedent is survived by a spouse, and there are no surviving children or descendants of deceased children, the entire estate goes to the spouse. If a decedent is survived by a spouse, and one or more children or their descendants, and if all the children who survive or who have descendants are also the children of the surviving spouse, the entire estate goes to the surviving spouse. If a decedent is survived by a spouse and one child or the child's descendants, and if the surviving spouse is not the natural or adoptive parent of the child, the spouse receives the first $20,000 from the estate plus one half the remainder of the estate. The balance of the estate passes to the child, or, if the child is deceased, to the child's descendants. If a decedent is survived by a spouse, and more than one child or their descendants, the spouse receives the first $60,000. If the spouse is the natural or adoptive parent of one, but not all of the children, or the first $20,000. If the spouse is not the natural or adoptive parent of any of the children, the spouse receives one-third of the balance of the estate and the children will receive two-thirds of the balance of the estate in equal shares. Descendants of a deceased child divide that child's equal share. If there is no surviving spouse but surviving children or their descendants, each of the children receives an equal share of the estate. Descendants of a deceased child divide that child's equal share. If the decedent has no surviving spouse or children, and no descendants of deceased children, the estate goes to his or her surviving parents, or, if both parents have died, in equal shares to brothers and sisters or their descendants. OP, our children are two and one. Does this basically mean my children and I can continue to live in our home? Or is there some kind of legal process that has to take place for half the equity? I really appreciate your help, commenter. As the parent of your children, you also get to manage their assets half of your house until they turn 18, so you're going to be okay. Life insurance is all yours if you're the named beneficiary. After your fiancé pulls through, you should probably both get wills done, so you can be sure in the future. Update. I apologize for formatting and grammar errors. I am on my phone. My post got a decent amount of attention. I thought I would update since I still get really sweet messages from people wishing me well or praying for me and my family. My fiancé, now husband, did pull through. He's currently in our backyard setting up a tent to camp out with our two- and three-year-old boys. He was in a coma for over a month and the doctors were pretty sure he would never wake up. His recovery was slow, and he still goes to physical therapy four times a week, but he is pretty much back to normal now, and we couldn't be happier. Although it was a horrible thing to go through, it changed both of us for the better. You don't realize how much the little things matter until they're about to be taken from you. 
He was appalled by his sister's actions when I finally discussed it with him. We recently both made wills and made sure there was no chance Sill or Bill would get any money if both of us were to pass, or, God forbid, our children too. We also chose godparents for our children, and we are expecting a baby girl in 2018. I really appreciate all of the sweet, thoughtful messages I was sent. They definitely made me feel better on bad days to know how many people were praying for him. An informative comment in the best of legal advice thread. Commenter. What did the lawyer you called the next day about your post tell you? How did your husband's sister react when he woke up? Was she a problem for him through his recovery? OP. I actually used a lawyer who PM me on Reddit. He offered his services free of charge, and ironically, he only lived one town over. He was wonderful. He pretty much told me what everyone in the original thread told me. He went over our deed, life insurance, etc. He discovered there were holes that my sister's lawyer could exploit. But he wanted to wait to see what would happen with my husband before we really began to worry. She left a few days after I made the original post and did not return to visit even after he had woken up. She did sign a DNR. There was nothing I could do, but thank God my husband did not need it. She did try to have us cover her legal costs. She's still threatening us with small claims court, but that is still ongoing. We really don't hear much from her. Edit. I forgot to add that we really don't hear much from her because she's currently in jail on possession charges. She was arrested in May and will get out in December. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.